show on Get Up this morning. I am Dan Graziano in for Greeny. And look who is on the show with me this morning. Diana Rossini and Dominique Foxworth are here to talk some football. And we have all the Tims you can handle. Tim Hasselbeck, Tim Legler, Tim Bontemps are ready to go. We're going to start with Legler. I don't even know what that is. We're going to start with Legler and Bontemps because we're starting with the game of the night between the 76ers and the Nets. Joel Embiid and the Sixers. Hey, looking to take a 3-0 series lead against those Nets. Early in the first game, tied at four. Mikel Bridges lobs to Claxton. Claxton falls. Embiid, you got to see this again. What does Embiid do to Nick Claxton when they're on the ground? Yes, a kick to the groin region. Embiid would be assessed a flagrant one while Claxton would get a tech. Things getting chippy early in the Sixers-Nets game. 17 seconds left in the third. Sixers down four. James Harden's going to drive. On Royce O'Neal, he's called for the offensive foul. Harden's confused, but it gets worse. Harden hits O'Neal in the groin. This was the theme of the night. Guys hitting guys in the groin. Harden would be assessed a flagrant two and be ejected. Both Harden and Embiid find this impossible to so did believe. I at the game. Tim Bontemps was at the game. He couldn't believe it either. They also played basketball in this game. <laughs> Claxton did? dunks on it. Yeah, but not yet. This is all about trash talk and technicals. Claxton gets his second tech. He's ejected. The easiest Claxton call the tonight. Mugging. Throwing Nick Claxton out of the game right there. Finally, an easy call. About five <laughs> minutes down, left in the fourth. Sixers down five. And Bede spins and makes the fading mid-range jumper. I can't even talk. I'm so flustered by all this groin kicking. Everything was flustered. 48, sec <laughs> 48 seconds left. Game tied at 96. Tyrese Maxey with a step back three. Maxey at least is having fun if no one else is. 14 seconds left. Nets down by two. Spencer did when he drives. And B says, get that out of here. Erasure. The end. That's that about did it. Final chance for the Nets. They're inbounding the ball. Show Embiid's block again. They're inbounding the ball. Eight seconds left. The Anthony Melton steals the inbound pass. Not not great for Maurice O'Neal. Might still be feeling that uh, that play from James Harden. It's earlier certainly today. possible. Sixers win. Embiid at 14-10. Maxi had 25. Here is Nets coach Jock Vaughn on the controversy. I don't think I've ever seen that in my career before, Alex, for a guy to uh, intentionally kick someone uh, in an area that none of us want to be kicked at or towards and uh, uh, for him to continue to play. I've never seen that before um, in a game and a guy continues to be able to play. You could see uh, what they were doing, you know, just trying to get a rise out of me. Um, you know, I'm too valuable, um, you know, especially after the first one. And, you know, you could see, you know, what the game plan was. Uh, got to hit them. Got to, you know, uh, make me frustrated uh, so I could get ejected. I'm too mature uh, to put myself in the position where I'm going to get ejected. That may well be, but he... he well, Joe, also that after the game, he didn't remember what happened on the Nick Claxton play, so maybe he didn't remember that he nearly got ejected in the... I would think by now he's seen a replay, <laughs> as has the entire world, but, I mean, look, he says he's too mature to put himself in position to get ejected. He has put himself here in a position I to get ejected. I would say, definitionally, he at least did that. Uh, Tim that. Legler, should Joel Embiid have been ejected for this uh, action? Yeah, he should have been ejected for that. It, it, to me, it seems pretty obvious, and you've got to use the same criteria, right? You're talking about a guy that was provoked. There's no question that Claxton provoked him by stepping over him, but there's also no question that Joel Embiid intentionally kicked up and intentionally kicked him in an area that he just happened to miss. So I guess the point is here, when you look at these two different plays with Harden and Embiid, if you're going to go put some work in on the speed bag, if you hit the target, it's one thing, and if you miss the target, it's, it doesn't matter. And, and, and intent should be what you're talking about here, and that's why, for me, this should have been an obvious ejection. Now, if you're starting to talk about suspensions because Draymond got suspended after the fact, the league clearly said that past behavior played into that decision. There really isn't anything like that with Joel Embiid, so I don't know about a suspension, but there's no doubt he should have been ejected in the moment. Well, to your point, Tim, when I saw the play live before they came back, because I was at the game last yeah. night, I thought it was going to be a flagrant run for the reason you said, that he did it with Nick Claxton on the play, right? Like, if you'd see it. <laughs> not for lack of effort. Not for lack of effort. <laughs> and obviously, to Tim's point, if you talk about intent, these guys have a history going back to January. They got double technicals in the game. Ben Simmons actually played in Philadelphia a couple months ago, and there clearly was issues. 
you know, there's here, you can see right here what happened with back in that game, uh, back in January, you know, Joel Embiid had words about what Nick Claxton said after that game. So this goes back a couple months. They've had a couple games in this series. They're guarding to get each other all the time. But ultimately, look, you look at this play with Embiid, there's no question to Leg's point what happened here. I think Joel got away with one because of the fact he didn't connect. And I think they don't want, I mean, look, the NBA doesn't want to, I think in general, throw guys out of games. It's what made the later situation with James Harden so wild because, yes. you know, then obviously they threw him out of the game for something that seemed less than this. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Tim, because James Harden had some thoughts. He on did have some thoughts. Out of the game. You were there listening to him, but let's That's let right. everybody else hear what he had to say. Unacceptable. Harden, unacceptable. Like unacceptable flagrant too. Like the first time I've been ejected, I'm not labeled as a dirty player. You know what I mean? I didn't hit him in a private area. Um, somebody's draped on you like that defensively. It's just a natural back basketball reaction. Honestly, I don't even think it was a foul on me, but um, yeah, that's unacceptable. That, that can't happen. All right, so Tim Legler, I'll ask you the same question again. Should James Harden have been ejected for that? No, I thought this was one of the worst ejections I think I've seen in, in 22 years doing this and covering the league since I've been out of the league and when I was in the league 10 years as a player. I don't think I've seen anything quite like this. It's so obvious when you watch that that it's unintentional. Uh, now, the officiated crew might say they interpreted it differently, but every basketball player watching that knows when you have the ball in one hand and you're going to use your off hand to create a little bit of space or to get some momentum generated as you start to put the ball down with your opposite hand, you know, your, your opposite arm is going to make contact with a defender that is completely inside your airspace. That's what James Harden did. Um, to me, it you should have been obvious when they watched the replay that it was unintentional. Uh, I don't even know. I agree with James Harden. I'm not even sure I'm calling an offensive foul on that play. I am certainly not calling a flagrant two. And even if you wanted to take it to a place where you said it's a flagrant foul when that crew's looking at it courtside, it's got to be a flagrant one at most. It cannot be a two and toss a guy out of a game for that. So that was shocking to me. Yeah, I mean, all the press row was flabbergasted when this call was made in the arena. Like, I thought it was going to be an offensive foul. I, I was not even sure at first why they were reviewing it. Uh, it, was, it was crazy. I mean, and look, the NBA, the NBA has created this problem where you have guys reacting whenever they get hit and right. going down and trying to get these flagrant foul reviews because a flagrant foul gets you two shots and the ball. Yeah. And on top of that, for James Harden, for example, Philly's trying to make a deep playoff run. Right. He now has two flagrant foul points. If you get four flagrant foul points, you get suspended for a game. So this has potential consequences down the road as well for the Sixers and on top of the fact that they very easily could have lost this game and extended this series even further. So th this is a significant problem I think the league is going to have to deal with because, again, Royce O'Neal in this situation, however badly he got hit, the fact that this caused a review and got James Harden thrown out of the game – was a big boon to the Nets. Right. We're going to have a lot more on this as we go. But real quick, like th we've seen in the past, the NBA could rescind the, the flagrant or downgrade they it. Could right? downgrade it. They could downgrade it. They could say it wasn't a flagrant at all. They could downgrade it to a flagrant one. It'll be interesting to see if that happens. My guess is, though, that they will not. Yeah. So we, we go forward with it. By the way, the Sixers won the game, in case anybody forgot to notice. They're up three games to none in the series. <laughs> that series is basically over. Uh, but... Uh,